to collect that information and go and present it to the king and say, my king, this is what your people are complaining about. And then let the king um, uh, sleep over the matter, discuss it with those who are closest to him, including members of the royal family, take a decision, and then uh, call you as a traditional prime minister and say, as the royal family, we've looked into this matter, we've discussed this matter, and this is the conclusion we have arrived at. Then the traditional prime minister will take the message back to the people. Uh, regarding this particular issue, uh, for, for instance, uh, you recall that uh, Prince Mangusu Tukterezi heard the rumor that uh, uh, Princess Magade was in fact saying that uh, he's not going to let King Mrs. Zulu use Enyogeni for this particular event. Then uh, Prince Mangusu Tukterezi, in his capacity as the traditional prime minister and not as the emeritus um, uh, leader or president of the IFP, but as a uh, uh, the traditional prime minister of the Zulu nation, he had to come public and explain the history behind the building of these policies. At one point, he even stated that uh, uh, his government, the government he was leading, was the government, uh, was responsible for building these policies, and they've been assisted by government. Even to this day, there is a budget set aside for the upkeep of these policies. In other words, uh, the reigning king is the one who is the custodian of this particular of these uh, policies uh, and then of course he's not doing it alone he's doing it as part of the collective but he's the head in which case then no member of the family uh, can say that uh, this particular palace is a no-go area it was in that context therefore that even after others had suggested that uh, this particular event today should be held at Kwakangela. And then he said, no, 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 it can't be, because traditionally this particular event has always been held at Enyogeni, and this year will be no exception. It will still be held there, and we're having it here. And then whether a uh, Princess Magade was forced out or he voluntarily left Enyogeni, uh, for me, it's immaterial. The reality of the matter is we have an event happening where it is supposed to happen, where other events have also taken place under King um, Goodwill Zolitini and even other, uh, under other kings uh, before him. Now, of course, Prof, as you continue to also have these conversations around, you know, some of the tensions that are currently uh, within the kingdom. Yesterday we saw how, you know, just when uh, members uh, of the kingdom tried to address members of the media yesterday, they were interrupted. Uh, don't you think this sort of speaks to the urgency of how this particular uh, matter or rather the conflict within the kingdom should be addressed? Uh, yes, so the sooner this issue is resolved, the better. And for me, the best way to do this is not to go to courts. Unfortunately, that is the reality we are faced with. For me, the best approach would have been to draw from history and draw from cultural practices. Uh, some of us have been at pains trying to explain how Zulu tradition and culture operates. And then I, I lamented the fact that uh, we are now using a dual system where on the one hand, we are relying on cultural practices, but then on the other hand, we are relying on Western ways of doing things. And at times, these two don't necessarily match. And you find that one is singing on this particular hymn book, the other one is singing on the other. But be that as it may, that is the reality we are faced with. So once you have exhausted your processes, your traditional processes, then the next step is for you to go to court. This is what is currently underway. Like uh, you mentioned earlier on, and, and, and also your colleague mentioned earlier on that uh, a Princess Magate has already uh, submitted papers or served the prince, uh, the king with uh, uh, the papers uh, saying that he's challenging the throne, uh, something that had happened even before other events unfolded. So that is where the court will then, will, will then have to come in. So my plea basically will be that uh, now that uh, the papers okay, have been prof. served, let the courts expedite the process. Okay. Professor Mgomezulu, can I just ask that we just pause this conversation for now because I need to bring in uh, my colleague Jade Pulser, who's actually monitoring developments uh, coming out of the palace there. Uh, Jade, it's great to have you back on the agenda at this hour. So talk to us about what's happening there. I also understand that you have a guest for us. There's absolute festivities just behind you. Uh, 
it's absolutely beautiful. The maidens have just come and given their reeds. We saw the first maiden there coming through and placing her reeds down and then offering it to the king, uh, Mrs. Zulu Kwa, as well as me. And then we saw other maidens coming through. So there's a little hive of activity. The groups are still coming through Mkulisi before they head down to the showgrounds. And this is now the time where we speak to people and we talk about the legacy of the former king and also what the reed dance means to the Zulu nation. Now, I am joined by Terry Mkleche. He is the chairperson of the Mrs. Zulu Foundation. Thank you so much for joining us, sir. I want to go straight into it. So the Mrs. Zulu Foundation, not only is it assisting young girls, and I suppose that is it's, it's such a good thing to see that he's taken the baton from his dad and running with it, you know, educating young girls, um, bursaries for them. Tell us more about the foundation. Uh, the foundation is, is very much interested to the, to, to the young maidens. Uh, we got uh, programs under the foundation called Career Expo. Career Expo is targeting grade uh, 9 up to grade uh, 12. Those are five days long event activities that take place in the 12th KZN district. And uh, under the foundation we also have something called uh, King Mrs. Zulu Scholarship. Uh, under the scholarship we already issued five scholarships for 2023 at uh, school admission. Uh, because uh, 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 these children, um, they, they, they need more than just uh, um, uh, taking care of themselves, they also need to be empowered. I mean, um, um, when, we, when these women are empowered, then the nation is empowered. So we know the sketch of, of OGPV, and it's mostly uh, 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 based uh, on women depending on men. So his majesty the king is very uh, 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 um, interested on empowering women. It's pro-women, he said. So um, uh, uh, this, uh, the, when he established his foundation, he categorically said his best, his interest, main interest is to empower women and girls. So therefore, um, uh, the scholarship for now is targeting for, uh, uh, in the olden days, a uh, uh, term we used to call standard six. So meaning from standard six up to metric. That's what the scholarship uh, he, that his matches has issued for now, for 2023 admission. And how will that scholarship work? As I imagine in northern KwaZulu-Natal, um, poverty is quite rife here. So how does it work? How do you um, single out a household with a young girl that really needs um, funding to be able to better herself, but also um, go into the respective fields of study that she wishes? Um, the prerequisite for, 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 for King Mrs. Zulu scholarship is underserved, underprivileged, academic, academically deserving, and financially challenge, challenged. So, uh, but in case that then we've got 12 districts in total, so we give a chance to all these 12 districts, then they go for academic assessment. Those who are lucky enough to, 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 to achieve uh, during the academic assessment, then they are given that scholarship. So in partnership with uh, the, the um, uh, Star College in Durban, uh, because uh, the reason we partnered with this scholarship in Durban is because it's, they got a, it's a boarding school. So some children, they are child-headed household. So when you take a child who's doing a grade eight, we call it standard six and in, in other, in other term, to be in a boarding school. So you take a child away from social ills for five years term. Yes. Thank you. Let's leave it there. That okay. was the chairperson of the Mrs. Zulu Foundation, Terry Mkleche. Thank you so much Thank for, for chatting to us. And that's it, Mkolisi. Just talking about the good work that His Majesty the King is doing in northern KwaZulu-Natal, also assisting young girls in order to uh, go and further their careers in their studies. As you heard there, that was the chairperson of the foundation. I'm just going to move out of shot and show you what's happening on your screens. I see there are media that are heard together and
and they are awaiting possibly the last group. I'm sure I counted 10 so far. Not too sure if this is some of the last group before we make our way to the showgrounds. And that is where His Majesty the King, Mrs. Zulu, Kazwelitino, will address his subject.